so we praise the Lord that he's still a miracle worker. Amen. He hears and answers the prayers of believers. Amen. So thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles this morning, open them up this morning to the book of Luke. I'm going to go a little bit different direction today. I really felt the Holy Spirit impress this upon my heart. And so I'm bringing this to you this morning from Luke chapter 16. And I'm going to be ministering to you with the Lord's help this morning. A really powerful and important thought in Scripture. It's all important. But this one, even more so, considering the time in which we're in. The thought I'm going to be ministering to you this morning is the thought of what happens in hell. <clears throat> yeah. What happens in hell? There's a lot of people that, church people, that don't want to hear about hell. There's a lot of churches that will not preach about hell. Hell is not a contemporary thought in today's church life. You know, we would rather hear about the good things of God. We would rather hear about what it takes to be a success in life and all of the social aspects in life and the blessings upon life, how God helps us through all those things are all good and necessary teachings. But also is the need to teach about hell. To preach about hell. There are those that would argue that hell is not a real place. They have minimized it to uh, an allegory or to just a spiritual emphasis that Jesus made. And it's not a real place. But I, I, take, I take issue with that today. And, uh, and I will show you why as we look into the scriptures this morning. Amen. And uh, there's those in church life that have, have popularized hell. They've sensationalized hell and they've commercialized hell and they've sold their books about hell. They said they've been to hell and they've been back out of hell and, and, so, they, and they, so they write all the books about hell. I don't know about all of that. All I know is that the Lord thought it was an important enough doctrine to put it inside of His Word. And if it's in His Word, then we need to know about it. We need to preach it. We need to understand it. And most and foremost of all, we want to make sure that we avoid it. Amen. 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 So we're going to look at St. Luke chapter 16 and begin in verse 19. We're going to read down to verse 31 this morning. Luke 16, 19 to verse 31. Jesus is teaching. He says here, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he appeared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desire to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in your lifetime received the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between you and us, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from you to us cannot, neither can they pass from us to you that would want to come there. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For if I brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one went from the dead, then they will repent. And he said unto him, If they will not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, even though one rose from the dead. Take this context this morning and preach for a little while. From that 23rd verse is my text, where it says that the rich man was in hell. He lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and he saw Lazarus in his bosom. And I want to preach this morning about what happens in hell. Let's look to the Lord, bow our heads, and pray this morning. Lord, you are good. And I thank you today for your presence that we've been filling in this place. I thank you for your keeping power and your saving grace. I thank you for your great love and plan that you have for your creation. 
Oh, how much you love us, Lord God, that you sent your son into the world, that he could become the bridge that we could cross into eternal life. Because you said, Lord, that whosoever would believe in Jesus would not perish, but have everlasting life. But help us to consider this morning, Lord, what would happen if we don't? Where were you destined for if we are found without Jesus when our time of end comes? God, let this be a reality. Let this be a message, Lord God, that will be an awakening today. Let this message today, Lord God, sink into our hearts and cause us to ponder and consider it. God, teach us, Holy Spirit, in your depths of your truth. This we pray and give you glory for in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. What happens in hell? Here in the context here, we find Jesus teaching the Pharisees and those around him concerning in an eternal event. Something in eternity. Now there are many that argue that this is a parable. They say this is something, it's just a story. Something that Jesus was giving them some type of you know, kingdom teaching about. But the Bible doesn't say it was a parable. You find as you read through the context, chapter before and the chapter after, that there's a definite break from parables into the place where Jesus started getting real. I mean, he's got real with the with the disciples and, and, and I mean with the with the uh, with the Pharisees and Sadducees, and he just started telling them some things as they were. He broke away from parable teaching into a place of just truth. You know, he got to a place where it says uh, that he talked about adultery and those sorts of things. That wasn't a parable. And then he started into this teaching that we're about to look into here to, today. He started teaching about hell, what happens in hell. It's for our benefit to know as the Lord's grace came down and canonized this and put in scripture for us to be able to get the eternal curtain rolled back so we can get a glimpse into the eternal state and see what happens when people leave this life and go into that life. I've got to tell you something today, and you better hear this well, that this life isn't all there is. Amen. There is somewhere we go after this life. Yeah. We, go to, we either go to heaven or we go to hell. Amen. 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 And I know this isn't a popular teaching, and so I need God's grace to help me today, but I've got to tell you the truth this morning. We are destined to either heaven or hell. Yeah. And that, that's the Bible. That's not Pastor Banton. So if you're mad today, then you're going to get mad at God, not at me. Because this is His Word that we're reading it from this morning. So it becomes a literal truth that Jesus is teaching to those that are around Him. And there's a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees around Him. And He begins to break open the curtain and reveals an eternal truth. That there is a destination that happens after we leave this life. He gives the example of two people, three people actually... He gives an example of them. And two of them he names by name. And that's another mark of demarcation that lets us know that it's not a parable. Anytime Jesus taught a parable, he used generalities. There's a certain man. There's a certain woman. There's a certain field. You know, he always used a generality, but not here. Here he used specific names. He used the name of Lazarus, the beggar, and he used the name of Abraham. The father of our faith. And so that sets it apart from a parable. Yes. Yeah. Into a place of speaking literal eternal truth for you and I to comprehend today. Yeah. It's important that we grab a hold of this because we are destined for future. We are destined to go into eternity. Yeah. And when we do, we're going to go to one of two places. We're either going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. Which one do you choose today? Okay, yeah, I didn't really need an answer, but I want you to get my point. Which one do you choose? Well, let's take a look here this morning. Let's look what he says. It says, a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day, that there was a certain rich man, and that there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid his gate full of swords. And desire to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked its sores. Now this 22nd verse says, And it came to pass that the beggar died. The beggar died. And he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. 
And the rich man also died and was buried. All of a sudden, we're starting to get a glimpse of something here. The Lord, if it would have just been stopped right there, then we could assume that those who teach hell being just the grave are right. Because it says that the rich man died and was buried. And so his hell becomes his grave. But Jesus doesn't stop there. Jesus proceeds to show those who have any type of spiritual <coughs> adeptness that something goes on beyond the grave. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Yes, amen. Something goes on beyond the grave. He says a rich man also died and was buried. Well, what, ha what happens? Well, he says in this 23rd verse, after the rich man died and was buried, and, a little conjunction there. Say, wait a minute, the story's not finished yet. The rich man died and was buried, and, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. What is taking place? What is going on? We see the first point of what happens in hell. The Bible is very clear. It lets us know that the rich man died, was buried, and then lifted up his eyes from hell. And he saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And the first point I want to make here today about what happens in hell. When a person goes to hell, they are in a place of recognition. Come on.